We are back on the Zero Hour. I'm Richard Eskow, RJ Eskow, and in this segment, we are going to be exploring the massive, mysterious monolith that is Google. Yasha Levine is a roving reporter with Pando Daily, formerly editor of The Exile, co-founder of The Shame Project, and author of The Corruption of Malcolm Gladwell. Yasha, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me on. I got to tell you a quick story about Malcolm Gladwell, by the way. I wrote a review of Blink where um, I said I only read a couple paragraphs, but I think it's no good. <laughs> and isn't that the point? And I got a very heated letter from someone representing his publisher about that. But uh, I was just being flippant. Um, I actually have just purchased The Corruption of Malcolm Gladwell, by the way, and I'm looking forward to reading it. But the topic of the day is Google. You've written a couple of great pieces on Google, and one of them, you say that uh, um, as alarming as Google Street View was, that wiretapping scheme was just a tiny experimental program compared to Google's bread and butter, a massive surveillance operation that intercepts and analyzes terabytes of global internet traffic every day, and then uses that data to build and update complex psychological profiles of hundreds of millions of people. You've heard of it. It's called Gmail. So, Google says, don't be evil. Are they really as bad as that? Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, they wouldn't consider it bad. I mean, I think that's from the very beginning the 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 uh, goal of uh, of Sergey Brin and Larry Page is to, was to create a, essentially an artificial machine that knows you better than you know yourself and, and can predict things before you even know that you want them. You know, so it would actually search... You know, so it search things for you before you even search, essentially. And so in, in order to do that, it has to know you very well. And in order to know you very well, it has to surveil you very well and get to, you know, it has to know everything about you. And so surveillance is, is, is not like, uh, is, is not an evil aspect of it. It's not something that came, you know, later on as the company got bigger or, or more profitable. I mean, it was, it's kind of it's built into the, to the, to the DNA of, of the company from the very beginning. Into their, into their, into, yes. Now let me let me ask a devil's advocate question, which I don't agree with, but I'll ask it for a, anyway. Go ahead. <laughs> so what's wrong with that? So they know everything about me. So when I wake up in the morning, they say it's Friday morning. Escal, you'd really like to have uh, a, a cup of uh, uh, Pete's coffee, and then go to the mm -hmm. beach, and uh, we'll have uh, you know we can call Uber for you or whatever, and get your taxi down. So what? What do I care? Well, you know, it's. I mean, you might want that, you know, and you might actually uh, desire that, and so you might uh, voluntarily opt into that, which is which is fine. You know, everyone it's a, it, everyone has a free choice to do whatever they want. But you know, the, the bigger problem with this is that most people don't know that this is happening to them. You know, they don't know that everything that they're doing online through Google, which is pretty much everything that you do these days, you know, whether or not you have an Android phone, whether or not you use Gmail, even if you email with a Gmail user and you don't have Gmail yourself, but you're emailing with someone who has Gmail. You know your conversations. What you're saying is being recorded and being profiled, and and um, and so you don't really have control um, over whether or not you can stop this or whether or not you approve of this of, of of this collection of information, very personal information potentially. Uh, you know, and, and 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 another problem with this is, you know, when you collect all this information on hundreds of millions of people around the world, and you create these really detailed, vast databases on 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 just about everything they they do during the day. And what they think about, what they, you know, their fears, their their sexual preferences, you know, their uh, political uh, uh, affiliations, their political activity, all sorts of things. You know, it gets stored in some database, it's spread all around the world. And, and the question is, what happens to that data? Let, let's say we all, let's say we trust it. Let's say we implicitly trust Google. And let's say we, let's just say that Google is a great company. It will never do anything bad with our data. It it, it it cares about us. It cares about our privacy. And it will be really damaging for Google. Let's say. If, if it were to sell this information to, let's say, an authoritarian regime. But we don't really know what will happen to Google 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now. You know, uh, you know corporations come and go. Uh, and uh, as part of, as, and, and, you know, corpor and, and so let's say it goes bankrupt in, in 20 years and some other company, you know, t takes over its business. Well, you know, it's gonna, Google's going to have this ridiculously detailed uh, database on on hundreds of millions of people, uh, and it's that data is worth a lot of money. So it's an asset. It becomes an asset, 
and that asset can be sold for money. You know, if, if let's say, or if, if, if Google goes bankrupt, let's say, you know, its creditors can auction off that data to, to, the, to the highest bidder. So we don't know, we don't have control over that data, and we don't know what will happen to that data. And because, you know, Google is still a relatively young company, it's only been around for like a decade, a little more. And really, so we're just beginning to even grapple with the ramifications of what it means for to give one company, one corporate entity, um, the, this basically control over our uh, personal information and our personal histories. Really, you know, the more time you spend on Google, you know, the the, the, the more detailed it gets. And if you're, in a, you know, and if you're a kid who 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 is just, you know, uh, was like became a teenager. Uh, you know, in 2000, let's say, four, when they launched their Gmail service, and you started using Gmail right from the very beginning. Well, and you're going to be using Gmail for the next 20, 30 years of your life. Well, they know pretty much everything about you, like, you know, from, from the time that you were a kid. So, for, it's, it's, And it's interesting that you mentioned kids, because since we actually asked you to come on the program, there's been a news story about Google, which is that the, the email application they were offering to schools, which they, it, it, now correct me if I'm remembering this incorrectly, if you know, but uh, they were offering this to schools and saying they weren't going to mine the data of the children's emails, but they have been. Do you, are you familiar with that story? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. Exactly. It, it actually goes back to a... Uh, um, a a series of lawsuits um, uh, that started out uh, all across the country, um, in different states uh, that uh, uh, pertain to various aspects of, of, of the Gmail business, and they were combined into one lawsuit. And they've been they've been seeking, uh, I think it was about I think six different lawsuits. And one of one of the class of uh, one of those lawsuits was about the educational uh, education app. So you know, Gmail for uh, colleges and, and high schools and, and whatnot. And um, and um, yeah, and and so uh, that so that's been moving through the courts, and just recently they were uh, they were denied class action um, status that that lawsuit. They were seeking class action loss, classification, uh, and so they were just denied that. I think uh, a few days ago, if not it's not it's not yesterday. Um, yeah, so it, it, exactly. So you know, it's it says that hey, we're not going to serve you. We're not going to be serving you ads if you're using Gmail for educational purposes. Like you know, the, I think the University of Berkeley. Where, where I, where the university that the university that I attended, I think uses Gmail. And um, for instance, you know, they said, "Oh, well, you know, we're not going to serve you ads because this is an educational app." And all. And but, unbeknownst to anyone, they were actually still mining the, the data for information. They were just not using it to display adver- relevant advertising, which is what you would see if you were a, a, a just a regular kind of commercial or uh, user of Gmail. But once you go, or let's say you graduate, if they tra- if they link your identity with your future identity, they can do it then. They have even more data about you. They know not only what you're doing now, but what you did back in college. Um, so, listen, we, we just had a, a segment earlier where we talked about Rand Paul going to UC Berkeley and giving a big speech, compelling, very compelling speech about the NSA and the national security state. But Rand Paul, who's saying a lot more about surveillance surveillance and civil liberties than virtually any other politician out there, although I think he's a nut economically, didn't say word one about Google. And what is to prevent, uh, first of all, Google's knowledge from getting into government hands? And secondly, isn't that an awful lot of power? Isn't your point, this is an insane amount of power for any one organization to have because knowledge is power? Yeah, no, it's, uh, that's right. And the fact that, you know, uh, Rand Paul uh, didn't mention Google is um, and cares only about this NSA. It, 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 yeah, I mean it's it's in line with his with his uh, worldview, obviously. And of course, he's not going to be talking about uh, private power uh, and corporate power because he supports corporate power and private power. You know, un- un- unlimited and unchecked. So, and, and, and you know, speaking about the NSA and Google, well, you know, the Google and the NSA are not as far apart. You know, we make this we make this distinction between uh, public and private, and government and you know private and or corporate. So as if there's this g- giant wall that cannot be breached. And you know, when it is breached, you know, when the NSA spies on Google or whatever, or breaches its uh, data centers, it's like this, it's this huge outrage, and uh, and people freak out. But you know, that that wall is 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 much more fuzzy, uh, and it might not exist uh, at all uh, if you start to look at. Google's history, in particular Google. If you look at if you look at them, you know their the research that um, that created Google, uh, that that created the search algorithm from the very beginning in Stanford was funded in part by DARPA, which is the which is the sort of um, um, research and development 
fundraising arm of of the of the of the, of the DOD. So uh, so their you know Google search was funded by military money. And then when they left uh, Stanford in uh, in 1998 and set up and set up the Google as a private company, you know they were right away started uh, started. Uh, providing um, the intelligence community and uh, various arms of the, of the U.S. military with technology to enhance surveillance. You know, the first uh, the first contract with the NSA that uh, that Google had went back to 2003 when they provided search capability to the agency, internal search capability. You know, then they partnered a few years later with the NGA, which is a, the sister agency to the NSA, which deals in geospatial. Uh, surveillance, not signal surveillance, but ge- geospatial surveillance, which is, you know, satellite stuff. You know, they partnered with the NGA uh, um, to, you know, to provide, to outfit them with Google Earth. Google Earth is actually, it came from also a CIA-funded uh, startup, which Google purchased in 2004. Um, so, and, and, they, and then, they, you know, in a press release, they're uh, talking about how they work in, in concert with the CIA uh, with the NGA, with the intelligence community, to, to develop uh, Google Earth technology so that it can be used by, uh, you know, the, the, the U.S. military and in its, its intelligence services. So it's, it's you know, the... the, the so they know what um, you read, they know what you think, they know what your politics are, they know what your sex life is, and they know where you are geospatially. That's an unnerving <laughs> portrait. And I want to talk more about this, Yatra, if you can stick with us through the break. We'll, I want to talk more about this ecosystem of, of tech companies and government and private capital uh, after these, this break. Can you stick with us? I will try, unless Google you know, disconnects me. Okay, all right, okay. We will be right back after this. I'm Richard Escow, and this is The Zero Hour.